Welcome back to National Report, a live look here at the courthouse in Washington, D.C. This is where the former president, Donald Trump, is expected to be arraigned today. Uh, you see media trucks there. They're set up, ready to go. Barriers have also been placed outside the courthouse preparing for the arraignment. The former president facing charges related to special counsel Jack Smith's probe into the 2020 election on January 6th. Uh, Trump has been indicted on four counts, including conspiracy, uh, again, three counts of conspiracy and one obstruction charge here. And for the purpose of this segment here, we'll bring in Doug Burns. He's a former federal prosecutor joining us live here, uh, as well as Steve Barrick, a former federal prosecutor and a criminal defense lawyer. Also, Jesse Benal, a Trump attorney, not representing him on this case. Gentlemen, thank you for being on. We appreciate sure. that. So, Steve, if I could start with you, you've been on both sides, uh, defense, prosecution in the past what can we expect from this arraignment today? Well, I, I wouldn't expect a lot of fireworks today. The, the court will read and advise uh, the former president of the charges against him. I would imagine he will enter in a plea or continue the arraignment. Uh, my guess is he would enter a not guilty plea. I heard earlier you mentioned that he has grave concerns about uh, the venue regarding this case, and I would tend to agree with him uh, regarding whether or not he could get um, a fair trial in uh, the District of Columbia. So that issue may be raised, but I wouldn't expect a lot of fireworks today in court at the arraignment. Hmm. Okay. I, again, you know, we saw him, he was arraigned in New York um, and also in Florida. So, so this is now the third time for the former president here. You know, Steve, you mentioned the venue, as did we, and it's because Trump raised the issue himself on Truth Social. He sent out this post. He said, um, again, in part here, it'll hopefully be moved to an impartial venue, such as politically unbiased nearby state of West Virginia, impossible to get a fair trial in Washington, D.C., which is over 95 percent anti-Trump. believe that's based on the uh, voting dynamics of the 2020 election. So, Doug Burns, to you, what's right. the likelihood of this case? actually being moved well unfortunately for them you know change of venue motions uh, are hard to prevail upon but you know I think he has a shot I certainly agree with what my colleague just said I mean it's overwhelmingly you know anti-Trump venue um, and it really isn't fair so the court hopefully will be open-minded and fair and give him a fair shake on this venue change motion I hope Again, Jesse, I know that you don't represent him in this in this particular case here, but what would be going through the minds of, of Trump's defense team at this moment, and really the mind of uh, again the uh, of the, the former president and going through this again yet a third time? Well, he's got an excellent uh, defense team in in this case and in the others as well. Um, you know, John Loro uh, is an absolutely great lawyer uh, for this case, uh, as is Todd Blanche. What they I, th I think are going to be looking at is all the different motions right now that you're going to have to, to bring. So for instance, there's, as has already been discussed, a venue motion here is very, very important. Donald Trump's biggest draw to the American people is that he has stand, uh, that he stood up to the Washington DC establishment. This is the Washington DC establishment in DC. That's the judge, that's the jury pool. Um, so it definitely does need to be changed. Um, but there's also gonna be very, very strong motions to dismiss. Um, on issues uh, such as the, the First Amendment, not just the free speech clause, but the right to petition the government for redress of grievances um, that this indictment completely ignores. Um, the, uh, the, just the, uh, the rest of the indictment is factually lacking because there is no facts out there um, that could be used to show that Donald Trump uh, committed any crime. He did things that were only protected by the Constitution that you do in free democracy, um, such as stand up for transparency in elections and have the right uh, to, to ask for uh, election contests and, and recalls. And I believe today, by the way, I know the banner says federal judge. I believe today it's a magistrate judge that, that uh, again, they'll appear before for that arraignment. Uh, Steve Barrick, Jesse Benal, and Doug Burns, we thank you all three for joining us. Appreciate, Appreciate it, gentlemen.